Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I just have a couple of two two quick things. First, I uh, just want to say thank you to everyone who showed up yesterday and helped with our uh, volunteer work day. Uh, I think you would notice the flower beds had new molds in them and a lot of power washing done and a number of other things. So uh, there's probably enough work for one more work day in the future. So thanks to everybody who showed up and helped out with that. Uh, and my second announcement is we'll be having a bishop's committee meeting uh, right after the service. We'll begin at 11 15 and uh, we're going to go over and discuss and hopefully approve for our budget for 2021. And uh, we have a, a gentleman coming that represents a uh, heating and air conditioning uh, company that's going to talk to us about some proposals that he's given us to replace the AC for, for the church. So, anybody who'd like to come to that, you're welcome to attend. Uh, I need to mention Meals on Wheels. Uh, Meals on Wheels starts in December, and it's only we only deliver on Mondays. So it's five Mondays, starting the seventh, fourteenth, twenty-first, and twenty-eighth. And we need four people each Monday because you're delivering five meals to each client. They're frozen meals. You will not go into their home. You ring the doorbell, you wear a mask, and I wear gloves when I do it as a substitute. Ring the bell, just make sure they come to the door and know you're there so the food doesn't spoil or the cats don't get it, which has happened in the past. Um, you need to pick up at Trinity Lutheran by 9.30. That Monday, um, the lady, Lanny Parker, is still there, so she'll be handing out the meals. And I put a sign up sheet in the back. I know a lot of people don't go back there anymore, but I really didn't know how else to really get the word out because that's what we've always done. And if you have any questions, feel free to call me. And uh, that's about it, but we need, we need have participation. This is part of our community outreach, and we have several people that are no longer with us that used to deliver a lot for us. So, one being Robin. Yes, ma'am. And I, last year, I took my um, Chinese kids with me, and we did it on a couple of Mondays, and they got the biggest charge out of it, because usually they're the ones receiving all the help. They love, and they got to meet last year, they got to meet the kids, and I mean, the, the clients, which was amazing, so kind of sad they don't get to meet them this year, but I'd love to do every Monday, for sure, we're in school, and then the ones we're out of school, I can do. Okay, well, it's back there, thanks, Ava. And, you know, the last time we did it in May, when people came to the door after we rang the bell, they talk, they wanted you know, to talk, it's important. And it's important that we assess how they are too. That's part of, of what we do. So anyway, need your help, thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I won't repeat all of that for everybody online, but <laughs> the, short, the short of it is, uh, Meals on Wheels will begin uh, in December, December 7th, mm -hmm. I guess is the first uh, day, um, but Pat Cool, if you're interested, you can contact her or contact anybody here at the church. I'm sure we can help you out. And uh, but we need we need help uh, delivering for Bill on Wheels. Any other announcements? All right, thank you. Oh, good morning. Glad you're here. Glad um, those of you that will join us online are, are here. Um, just uh, one other thing, we do have a bishop's committee meeting after church um, today, so that's going coming up. So we do not have Sunday school at the church today. We'll go back to Sunday school uh, next week. So that's one announcement I had. Um, please continue tuning in on Tuesday mornings. It's just been really beneficial for me to get to know you guys in that way as we just enjoy some fellowship on Tuesday mornings. And then the other thing I wanted to let you know about is that I have a date for my ordination. Um, it will be December 8th, that's a Tuesday night, and it's gonna be at St. Mark's Episcopal Church in San Marcos. 
And that way it honors both of the communities that I'm a part of, that's uh, St. Michael's here and also St. Nicholas in Spring Branch. That's where I did my field work when I was in seminary, so that makes it also a fitting place. Even though that's a much bigger church, it's still going to be a limited group. Um, and so if you're really interested in coming, talk to me because I can, I can have so many, um, you know, sort of extra people that aren't already readers or something else, but it is a small number. So if, you know, just everybody wanted to come, maybe we'll draw names or something, but um, if only a couple people are really interested, then I want to be able to say, come on. So just talk to me if that's something that you want to know more about. And I'm excited to be able to share that with you. And it'll be, it will be online when you go to join virtually either way. So that's coming up um, with the con consent of the standing committee and the consent of the bishop uh, December 8th. So um, welcome. Take a, take a deep breath and prepare your heart, prepare your body to worship together. I'm really glad you're here.
Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Judges. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Harochi Goyim. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron, and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly for 20 years. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Labado, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel on the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kadesh in Nepali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take position at Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Nepali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the Wadi Kuf Kishon with his chariots and his troops and I will give him into your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 123, 
in unison. To you, I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God, until he shows us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy. For we have had more than enough of contempt, too much of the scorn of the infant rich and of the derision of the proud. A reading from Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When you say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. <laughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ. 
us according to Matthew. Glory Jesus said, It is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done. Good and trustworthy slave, you have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with 10 talents. For to all those who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be seated. Do you remember the first time you were put in charge? As children, we love being in charge of something or someone, right? Teachers know this. They're careful and intentional about sharing the power of being the line leader or tending the class pet or changing the calendar. Now, the line leader isn't actually in charge of where the class is going. They're headed to the cafeteria or to the computer lab or wherever, regardless of who is leading the line. But the student in front is empowered nonetheless. As we get older, Sometimes being in charge doesn't feel empowering, it feels intimidating. The summer after I graduated from Texas A&M and before I started my first year teaching, I decided to take a part-time job. I finished school and through a friend, learned about a job at the Candy Bouquet in Alamo Heights. Making bouquets out of candy seemed like a fun way to spend the summer before I started real work. And I spoke to the owner on the phone and went in for my first day of work. I'd only lived in San Antonio for a few months at this point, and the candy bouquet was in a neighborhood I had never been in before that day. I had the address and a street map, and this was the dark ages where we didn't have maps on our phones, and I just followed the street until I got to the right number. 
After I'd been there just a couple of hours, the owner left me in charge and she went to run some errands. Now, the candy bouquet was not exactly a hopping place. They did a lot of on-site orders and we mostly sat in the back putting these candies on sticks and things. And so in the time I'd been there, I had learned a little bit about how to wrap candy, but not much else. And no one had come in and no one had called, but still I was a little apprehensive because I knew I didn't actually know anything at all about the operation. And of course, while I was in charge, the phone rang. A woman wanted to know where the store was located. I gave her the address and she said she knew the address, but she wanted to know where it was in reference to other landmarks. And our conversation went downhill from there. I didn't know any of the landmarks and I had no idea what other businesses were close. Finally, the woman asked me how I'd even managed to get there if I didn't know where I was. And it was very evident that she had real concerns about the intelligence level of Candy Bouquet employees. I politely asked for her phone number and offered to have the store manager call her when she got back. And it was humiliating. I dreaded having to tell my brand new boss what had happened. And I dreaded ever being left in charge again at that store. So it's one thing to be left in charge of a situation in which you know what to do. The line leader who knows how to get from the classroom to the cafeteria. It's another thing to be left in charge of a situation in which you have no idea what to do, like operating an unfamiliar business in an unfamiliar neighborhood. It's scary. And the potential for humiliation or even worse is high. Only a mean teacher would ask a student to be in charge when he or she wasn't comfortable, right? Wrong. <laughs> Whether we're talking about classroom teachers or life teachers like a new boss, a big part of what teachers do is put people in charge of things that they don't think they're ready for. That's how learning works. You wanna know how else learning works? Trust. If the students really trust their teacher, he or she can ask the world of them and they will try to do it. And when the teacher says, you can do this, a student who's learned to trust will believe that she can. Today's parable is about being put in charge. And it's also about trust. We don't get to know how ready any of the three slaves actually felt about it. All we can hear is how they responded to that opportunity. The first two slaves took what they had been given and put it to work. The third slave hid it. Now, it's important to recognize here that all three slaves had been given a huge amount of money. When this parable was told, a talent was an amount of money. It, the word didn't mean anything else. It didn't mean what we think of as talents today. And it wasn't just the name of a particular coin. A talent was about 20 years worth of the daily wage. To put that in perspective, and I'm going to tell you, I rounded up to make the math easier, but to put that in perspective, when I was teaching at Lake Travis High School, I made just less than $50,000 a year. If you multiply that by 20, you get a million dollars. I can sympathize, sympathize with the slave who, when handed the equivalent of a million dollars, freaked out a little bit and buried it. Being in charge of so much, that level of trust was not just intimidating, it was terrifying. He was afraid and he acted out of fear. Were the first two slaves intimidated or afraid? We don't know. What we can infer is that they trusted the master. They felt safe enough about who the master was that they were willing to try to use what they had been given. What do we know about the master in this parable? The master entrusted his property to his slaves while he went on a journey that lasted a long time. The master is someone with great wealth who's willing to trust others to do something with it. Presumably, had he wanted it buried, 
He could have done that himself before he left town. Spoiler alert, the gospel last week, this week, next week, are all about Jesus trying to get his disciples ready to be without him. He tells these parables in the context of Holy Week. This is Matthew chapter 25. Chapter 26 is the Last Supper and Gethsemane. So here's a good godly play question for you. I wonder who the master in this story is supposed to be. The third slave, the one who acts out of fear, clearly doesn't trust the master. In fact, he clearly doesn't even know the master at all. The slave's impression of the master is that the master is a thief. Because the slave doesn't trust the master, the slave cannot imagine that the master trusts him. The end of this parable is harsh. The slave being cast into the outer darkness with the weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I have to say, as an aside, really, Matthew? More weeping, more gnashing of teeth. This happens six times in Matthew's gospel. It's like his favorite punishment. And is this really necessary? But at any rate, since this is the gospel of Matthew, we shouldn't be surprised that this is the punishment that comes up for the slave who doesn't know the master and doesn't trust the master. But in this particular story, I think it's fitting because the outer darkness is what he creates for himself. When we reject relationship, we're left in the dark on our own. It's easy to look at the end of this parable and think of it as a parable about punishment. This is what will happen to you if you hide your talent. Instead, I think we need to back up and look at the first two slaves. When we look at them, we can see that this is actually a parable about finding joy. These people weren't given the same amount. They didn't produce the same amount, but they got the same response from the master. Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You've been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. What does it mean to enter into the joy of your master? The NIV translates this same line as, come share your master's happiness. The Common English Bible says, come celebrate with me. It can seem like the reward for being trustworthy with the five that became ten talents was to receive the extra talent. Like that was a prize. But that isn't a reward at all. The reward is relationship. The master trusted the slaves, all three of them. The first two slaves trusted the master. And now they've all seen that trust realized. The master and the first two slaves all get to share in joy together. Friends, God offers trust and invites us to trust in return. Talents are precious and special, extravagant even. Trust God enough to use the talents with which you have been entrusted. And trust one another, because a relationship based on trust, where trust is given and realized and earned and grows over time, is joyful. Thanks be to God, the source of joy and giver of all good gifts. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was in command. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, form six. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily work and life, in their life and daily work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and David, our bishop, Bryn, our deacon, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For comfort, Charla, and Faye. For friends and family of our church family. Melissa, Elmo and Janet, Ashley, De, uh, De, Devu and Debbie, Lydia, Johnny and Tamara, Peyton, Susanna, Louise, Meg, Troy, for Karen, Krista, Maureen, and Evelyn. For those, for all who are suffering from disease and or in financial hardship during this pandemic, for all affected by recent fires and hurricanes, for our country, for rain, for the Blanco AA and El Anon groups. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy, mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Our church. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in their eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them, who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most, most merciful Father. In your, your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, 
to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Yeah. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries? I know one. So y'all come on up here. <laughs> We'll pray for our, our anniversary first. So happy anniversary to y'all. And I invite you to pray with me. Grant, O oh God, in your compassion, that Dan and I, who celebrate the anniversary of their marriage, may grow in forgiveness, loyalty, and love, and come at last to the eternal joys which you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Happy anniversary, friends. And we also have two birthdays in our, in our community. Faye Somerville's birthday is this week, and Barbara Pope's birthday is this week. So let's pray for Faye and Barbara. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Faye and Barbara, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace, and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood. Mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Let us pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. the gift of God to the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith to thanksgiving.
Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are the true members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do love and serve you as the faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Say hi to Eddie or the Tatums. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Tatums. <laughs> they can. They're just muted. Mm. Asked to unmute. Hi, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> I saw Eddie here. Yeah, he was here yesterday. Oh, was he? Uh -huh. They can hear us, but they're uh, they're not unmuting. Anyway. Well, have fun. Okay, thank you. You take care. You feel a lot better. Where are y'all going? 